school districts. And that's going to happen. No matter what, whatever the amount is, that's going to happen this year in this fiscal year. You've got to give greater flexibility to those school districts on how they can spend the money. That's number one. But number two, understand that almost every mandate from the state, school districts in many instances have the ability to try to do a waiver system to opt out of that mandate as well. And very few of them try to do it. So I'm not, this is not here to condemn school districts and advocate the legislature. Clearly, if we're gonna be reducing funding to those school districts, we have to give them greater flexibility on how to spend the money from Harrisburg, but also understand some of those tools already do exist, which um, have not been utilized to the full potential as well. So both sides, the local school districts and the legislature and, the, and Governor Corbett, I think we need to do a better job when we pass the budget, which is going to have reduced funding to making sure that the message gets delivered on how we can deliver good education results with less money. Do you think that many school districts know about that waiver system that you're talking about, school boards? It's a, it's a good question. I, I think the answer is no. I, 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 correct, me, correct me if I'm wrong, Gene, but I think the, we had a mandate waiver piece of legislation that has expired. And in fact, we need to renew that uh, mandate waiver, and it, it's a host of... I think that's Ron's bill. That's yeah, okay, it's Ron's bill, so Ron can talk about this. So I think that's a very important priority that we need to, we need to be working on this session. We need to renew that, uh, that mandate waiver. There are a, uh, in, on the Senate side, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to speak too much here, but I can tell you what's happening on the Senate side. I serve on the Education Committee there. Uh, we have a number of priorities this year. We'll be talking about school choice in a little while. We'll be glad to share that with you then. Uh, number two, we need to. Uh, number two priority for us is we need to make some changes to our charter school laws, the way we uh, uh, we handle charter schools in the state. And third, we need to look at, ma at waivers uh, of mandates. And we already have a series of bills, probably ten different bills right now, and we're preparing a lot of others that would do exactly that. And we're talking about everything from prevailing wage, which we already discussed, to uh, allowing teachers to be furloughed for economic reasons, which schools cannot do now. Uh, they can't lay off the, you know, if, if, if the school budget is tight, a, a board cannot make a decision to lay off teachers because of that. They have to, they have to be other reasons. Population has declined at least 10%. They have to cut off the program. And there's, one, there's a third reason right now that I can't remember. But you know we need to give school districts the ability to lay off teachers for economic reasons. That's a, that's a huge mandate uh, that that we could waive that would really be meaningful. Uh, there's a lot of others that we would be glad to get into. We could give you a list uh, later. Ron, Mr. Miller. That's a state mandate. Yes. That's a question. Oh, I thought that was your bill that they were talking about, so I thought you wanted to comment. Yeah, it's it's not actually my bill this term, and I can't tell you who actually has it. It's one of the freshmen, I believe. Uh, it was my bill last term. We tried killing a couple of my uh, colleagues' bills on his side of the aisle with it, and uh, it was drafted as an amendment to many things. We just couldn't get it to pass. We, we could not get the extension of the mandate waivers. And it's part of the, what we're working on with the whole reform package on education funding and the way we're going to address these things. So you're going to see it. I just can't tell you exactly what form it's going to take, but it's going to be there. Matt? Yeah. Um, we looked at this and how many districts have taken advantage of it, and there was only a handful over a multi-year period. Uh, and what I find, and in talking to people, is that the complaints about mandates from Harrisburg or Washington tend to be an easy excuse for having to raise taxes. The folks will say, well, Harrisburg has told us to do this, or Washington has, and then all they do is they say, well, that's why we have to raise taxes. Uh, there are opportunities for school districts to apply for them. They haven't utilized them. They, know that they, they knew that they were there. Uh, and so taking away some of those excuses, I think, for raising taxes locally um, is, is a good part of this bill and it's making sure that they know, hey, go apply for it. Tell them how much that costs. Uh, same thing with federal. Many times people say, well, how much does the, do the NCLB mandates cost you or what would you do if they remove those? How would you teach differently? And usually the answer is uh, not a whole lot. There, it, it tends to be a good excuse for raising local taxes. Okay. Um, so to the audience, this is why we need you at school board meetings, to make them aware of what they need to be doing, because you give a school board your pinky and they gnaw off your arm. Uh, 
get in there and tell them what cleared up for them. Um, the next question, please. Let me, can I just, quick, quick answer to that is, just to speak on behalf of the House Republican Caucus, is that we're going to be bringing up all these mandates for elimination uh, this coming year. So pay close attention to the State House, and, and the Senate, as Lloyd talked about, is going to be bringing them up as well. You know, it's great when you support doing away with these, but representatives and senators across the state have got to hear that voice because there's somebody going to give an excuse for not for voting for prevailing wage. Uh, Jennifer Mann, who happens to be a Democrat, from up in Allentown, has told me how bad uh, they need to rebuild that school. Even though they're not a growing school, they have old buildings. Prevailing wage affects everybody. It doesn't matter whether you're building brand new schools because you're growing or you're fixing schools that are 50 years old. This is one of the top issues in this state. It's one of the most expensive things because remember, whether you're remodeling or you're building a new school, growth or just, just because the old one's worn out, 15 to 25% of the cost of that school is prevailing wage. And now you're borrowing that 25% and more than you get for 20 to 30 years. Add the interest on, and it's many, many, many bucks out of your pocket. And in your county, it has grown to be tremendous. So don't let anybody tell you it is not a critical issue in cutting costs at our schools across the state. And more importantly, it should not be a union issue. Unions make more money working at the prevailing wage than they do when they're working in their normal jobs. So this isn't about union versus non-union. This is about justice. This is about what it is. So there are a lot of people who want to use the argument that we're defending union jobs. Union jobs are actually getting killed because of this. The largest prevailing wage contractor in the state of Pennsylvania is from Connecticut. And prevailing wage doesn't guarantee you have to hire union workers. So a lot of this baloney that goes around this state Talking about prevailing wage is obscene and it's just an outright lie. All right, next question. We'll start with Senator Snucker and we'll walk our way down. This is a simple yes no question. Do you support eliminating the school property tax to fund our public schools? If you do not, is there another way you would alleviate our uh, property tax burden? Um, yes, and I've already voted for it, and I believe everyone that was in the House at the time, um, voted for it as well. Uh, I guess that pretty much answers it. We've all voted for it. It, it is well, I wasn't what? there at the time. Okay. Uh, what is it? Yes, anything. Yeah, limited. It was an amendment to, I'm sorry. It was an amendment to a property tax bill three, three or four years ago. Sam Moore's House Bill 1275 was offered as an amendment. Um, I was one of 10 Democrats that voted for it. There was 37 Republicans, 47 total votes. Um, and again, this goes to the issue we talk about is not one legislator that voted against it lost an election based on that. So, I mean, I, I mean I'm just, that's just the reality of it. All right, Seth, you said you weren't in, so would you like to answer that? Yes, anything. <laughs> Anything. Sales tax, income tax. I prefer sales tax. Obviously, that's the most efficient. You pick up individuals transcending, moving through uh, Pennsylvania and stuff. You can control your costs. You can go out and buy a Mercedes, knock yourself out. You're paying more taxes. You can go buy a quarter or a lower end. Is so. there a school property tax elimination bill that has currently proposed in the House or the Senate? There's several different variations. Um, I don't think I've seen a full elimination plan. Uh, Keith, I'm, I'm co-chairing our Republican task force to actually develop a comprehensive property tax elimination plan that will pass the House, hopefully pass the Senate. Uh, Governor Corbett says if he gets to his desk, he'll sign it. So that, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, we, Keith's looking at elimination plan, and, and we, we hopefully will have a vote on full elimination come this fall in the House. Just, just to let you know, and this is a good group to do this in front of. The, the question comes down, here's the complication that we have to answer with voters. Is complete elimination of property taxes, is that on just homeowners? Or is it on like the gallery and mall? What do we want? And that's been a question. Some areas want, some taxpayers say complete elimination at all on everybody. Others are just like, just on homeowners. And here's why. You have to change the Constitution of Pennsylvania if you're going to do it on uh, just